Around then, I was asked to speak at an energy conference in India. In many ways, India is more beautiful than I had imagined. And more exotic. And more crowded. There are people everywhere in nearly constant motion. Vehicles at every speed, on every road, at pretty much every hour of the day or night. Millions of new drivers finding new ways to fit in too few lanes. India already makes more cars than the U.S., and nearly all of them running on oil. It's very appropriate this meeting is in India. India will soon become the largest populated country in the world. It's growing, and the demand for energy is growing, and so many of the things that India does are going to lead the world as we move forward. All of a sudden, you're creating a new middle class in China and India. That's hundreds of millions of people who don't yet have cars, yeah. but know what cars are and know they want them. And so as their incomes rise, their consumption of automobiles is going to rise. And that means the world's consumption of fossil fuels, particularly oil, is going to rise. Right. But also their demand for electricity is going to grow. Yeah. One of the scariest statistics I've heard in the time I've been in this job was told to me by an Indian energy official. He said, you know, we have 600 million people in this country without access to electricity oh. today. Can you imagine? Oh providing electric, uh, what the challenge is, that's two United States. Can you imagine providing electricity for two United States? And they want to do it in the next, you know, 20 to 30 years. Yeah, they and, they'll be, and they'll be coal. adding population at the, at, at the right. same time. Right. So, and that's going to be coal. In two or three decades, the energy demands of India and China are expected to exceed those of the U.S. and all European countries combined. In terms of the carbon emissions, uh, the U.S. will soon be a minor player in this. Most of the carbon emissions will be coming from China, India, and the developing world. We will develop carbon sequestration, but it will be too expensive. They will not adopt it. This will become a point of friction in the future, mm. which we will not solve. And assuming the calculations are right, we will have several degrees of global warming, which we will learn to live with because there will be no alternative because unless it is really cheap and affordable, the developing world cannot adopt it. And we can't afford to subsidize these huge growing nations whose economies will soon be so much larger than ours. Coal and oil, electricity and transportation. Just as it did in the West, coal will power the development of China and India, but it will not be clean. Oil demand will increase, and so will risk, and so will price. The challenge, then, is not just to adopt alternatives, but to maintain the benefits of oil and coal without their disadvantages, and at a price we can all afford. Can it be done? <laughs> 